Athletes come in all different shapes and sizes. Each individual physique meant to fulfill a specific purpose. Each sport requires a unique set of intentions and physical attributes, and it's no different in the world of combat sports. Mixed martial arts is the most diverse sport that there is when it comes to athletes having physiques tailored towards a similar purpose, namely the purpose of combat. So today, we're going to look at the best body types for MMA. Wrestling. Wrestlers are jacked, explosive, muscular, gritty, and a gas tank to show for it. It's not your average grappling sport. In Jiu Jitsu, you're taught to sit crisscross applesauce and to bow to your instructor while he teaches class. Jiu Jitsu is about self defense, respect. Wrestling is about dominating, it's about winning, fighting through discomfort, through the grind. Wrestlers are just brought up differently. The sport also has a great emphasis on strength and conditioning. Pair that with the constant grappling, your will versus mine, who is going to break? Stuffing takedowns, throwing in a man to the ground, and doing everything in your power to pin him while he's trying to do the same to you. It's no mystery as to why wrestlers tend to be so tough. And there's no better example for this than current UFC lightweight champion, Islam Makhachev. Born on the cold cliffs of Dagestan, Russia, Islam Makhachev knows the grind. For it's par for the course for the Dagestani youth. Sports are free, and with a long history of Olympic combat sports athletes, becoming high-level wrestlers seem to be a path traveled by many. Islam Makhachev grew up hard, used to carry rocks on his back for miles on end. Pair that with training to dominate on the ground in a grappling sport like combat sambo. Makhachev's unmatched strength in the octagon is due to the efforts that he put in when he was a child. These harsh conditions, these create real men. From a young age, Islam Makhachev has been training to dominate on the ground. And he's talked about as being one of the strongest lightweights ever. It's no surprise when he gets into the cage, he always makes his opponents look small. I told my coach the same thing. There was something interesting about Islam. And I felt it. I'm like, it's just not human. It makes sense. What makes him so different? What makes that takedown so dominant? He's so patient. He's so strong. And he was so strong at holding his mount. I was like, interesting. I could try to get and turn. I couldn't move out of him. Like, no one's been that strong before. So I got to work on my weight training and, and get on my mount. Dagestani wrestling has been dominating the MMA space for years now. They're the result of a hard life, gritty wrestling program since their youth. And some would say they're just built different. The Great Cuban, Yoel Romero, Olympic silver medalist, world wrestling champion, five-time Pan American Games champion. Romero grew up poor. At the age of five, he wanted to be a boxer. And despite this and his dad warning him about brain damage, he would sneak out of his house to box with his friends. He loved boxing. But at a young age, he was recruited by the state officials to wrestle. And when they discovered the boy had a natural talent, the rest was history. Yoel started wrestling in a Cuban training center and went on to reach the highest mounting peak. But he's not just a high level wrestler. Yoel Romero is one of the greatest athletes to ever walk the earth. Often coined as the man of steel. Turns you superhuman just about. Cause like when I was punching and kicking him, he felt like metal. It hurt just to hit him, his opponents often said. Mountainous traps, symmetrical blocks for abs, tree trunk legs, capped delts, and a plate body chest. Yoel is clearly genetically gifted. Give a man like this a hard upbringing, introduce him to the constant grind of wrestling, and you have yourself an Olympic athlete. 
His build paired with his wrestling credentials made him one of the most feared fighters ever. The boogeyman of the division. Everyone was scared to fight him. Wrestlers have a presence when they get in the octagon. They have a tough mentality and a physique to show for it. From years of blood, sweat, and labor, they strike fear into the hearts of their opponents. Unless you've had an extensive wrestling background or judo, stopping a takedown from a relentless weapon that's been trained to dominate and bulldoze opposition is an impossible task. Even the most technical and cerebral lose their confidence when they know it all comes crashing down once you're taken off your feet. Because of this, people often leave themselves open to getting hit, for they're too focused on the possibility of getting taken down, and you do not want to have a lapse of judgment when standing in front of a man that has trained their entire life to be explosive. Where they lack in finesse, they make up in power. Some of the greatest knockouts come from the best wrestlers, the classic overhand right. High-level MMA wrestlers like Kamaru Usman, George St. Pierre, Yoel Romero have been able to win many fights because of this. Strikers, long and lanky, sharpshooters, snipers, the best strikers in MMA, they have similar attributes. For it is not the muscle that wins the fight, but the mastery of technique. When you think of the strikers in MMA, who comes to mind? Anderson Silva, John Jones, Conor McGregor, Israel Adesanya, Wonderboy Thompson, Sean O'Malley, Alex Pereira. None of these men are heavily muscled, but they're phenomenal athletes nonetheless. Having a lot of muscle isn't conducive to being flexible and nibble on the feet. Bodybuilders are often the butt of jokes at martial arts schools because of their stiffness. Instead, a lack of muscle allows for fighters to throw kicks and punches without tiring out due to lactic acid buildup. The more muscle, the more energy required to use it. Each movement requires more labor. This is why there's a kind of beauty to the movement of Anderson Silva. It looks effortless. There's a reason he looks like he's not even trying. A reach is incredibly important. Conor McGregor, at only 5'9", has a 74-inch reach, one of the craziest reaches ever in the lighter weight classes. John Jones, at 6'4", has the longest reach in UFC history at 85 inches. Sure, there are great strikers with a shorter and more compact stature, but even Alexander Volkanovsky sports an incredibly long reach with 72 inches at only five foot six skill is always king the dance of fist and feet poetry in motion for strength alone will not prevail it takes control agility and finesse to scale it's not about raw power or brute force it's about fluidity Beauty, agility, dexterity, this is what makes a great striker. Hybrids. These are the athletes that can do both. Men that are a jack of all trades. Robert Whittaker, for example, not overly muscled, not tall with a freakishly long reach. Nonetheless, he's one of the best strikers in MMA. Often beating striking legends like Israel Adesanya's opponents, much worse than Izzy himself. He also qualified for the Olympic Games and the Commonwealth Games to represent Australia in wrestling, often touted as the best anti-wrestler in the sport, a nightmare to take down. Robert Whitaker has the finesse and skill of the best strikers with the ability to keep the fight standing against anyone. Alexander Volkanovsky, a perfect example of a hybrid. He started playing rugby at a young age. Despite being a man of short stature, his gritty mindset and athletic talent allowed him to play professionally with much bigger men. 
Volkanovski is one of the most gifted athletes that we've ever seen in MMA. From playing rugby in his early 20s to being considered the best striker in the sport of MMA, despite not taking up martial arts until his mid-20s. The epitome of talent and hard work. Some of his most notable wins are his big three wins over the likes of Max Holloway, who many considered to be one of the best strikers of all time. Volkanovski schooled him for 13 rounds over the course of three fights, all on the feet. The Russian Pyotr Jan is another example of a hybrid physique, one of the best strikers in martial arts despite being on the shorter side for his division, not having a long reach, but often schooling taller and rangier opponents, having some of the best boxing that we've ever seen in MMA, using incredible wrestling to stuff takedowns from high-level wrestlers like Aljamain Sterling, who had 20 of his 22 takedowns stuffed by Pyotr Jan in the rematch. And Jan also took Sterling down more than five times in their first fight with no wrestling background. Jan is a man with perfect striking technique paired with a stone cold killer mentality and the brute force of a wrestler. Next, we have the big boys. These are the guys that perform better with a little more fat on them. Daniel Cormier, an Olympic level wrestler. This is not a man who has the long reach and the lanky physique of a striker. This is the man who walks in the octagon looking like he just got off the couch. Big pot belly, Daniel Cormier is as fit as anyone he ever fought. Daniel Cormier, a high level athlete, despite looking like the old trucker that lives down the street. Big boy, a guy who just performs better at a heavier weight, like an NFL lineman, fat, but a great athlete nonetheless. Some guys just feel better when they have a higher body fat. Chris Barnett, a master at Taekwondo. Despite looking like a fat guy you'd see at your local McDonald's. A great striker. Agile, fluid. Just performs at a higher body fat. How would he do if he cut down to his rightful weight class of 170? Who knows? Do you want to be a wrestler, a striker, a hybrid, or are you a big boy? Let me know in the comments. We all want to eat healthy, but it's difficult to do that sometimes without sacrificing flavor. That's the issue. People think that eating clean is all about chicken breast and broccoli, but that's bullshit. That's why I've created a cookbook with over 50 recipes made with whole and unprocessed ingredients so you'll be amazed at how tasty healthy eating can be. From classic comfort foods to international dishes, there's something for everyone in my Real Food Cookbook. Classic Indian butter chicken, healthy chocolate chip cookies, and big protein banana buckwheat pancakes. And guys, if you're an athlete or just someone that's looking to get in better shape, it all starts with the diet. Eating healthy is easy when the flavor is right, so get your copy of my cookbook that I personally made on my website, you can click the link in my description, get it today, start eating healthy, and you'll never be bored with healthy food again.